this is a very very difficult video to make um and that's mainly because of how unreal it just sounds just hearing what has happened last night so the other day um i was almost done editing my review for sonic and all-stars sonic and sega all-stars racing and i took a break from that and last night um my friends uh showed me the news that really shocked me very heavily the creator of dragon ball dragon quest uh, and many other of the most iconic piece of media out there the creator mainly the creator of dragon ball uh, akira toyama unfortunately passed away at the age of 68. This really shocked me and it, it really upset me the most because I have, you guys never noticed, but I, I've been a hardcore Dragon Ball fan. I've grown up watching Dragon Ball and to hear that the creator passed away is, is really, really saddening to be honest. And I, I couldn't get much. I could not get much sleep because I, I couldn't believe the news that really occurred. But I am, I am feeling a lot better now. And I just want to make this video to not only to announce the what happened, but also to share all my fond memories with the franchise because I've grown up watching Dragon Ball. I've started with the franchise at the age of 10. So my first time getting into Dragon Ball was from the video games. Um the first Dragon Ball game I played was Dragon Ball Z Budokai 2. I didn't own the game, but my older cousin owned he owned it for the PlayStation 2 and I've I really enjoyed playing that game a lot whenever I whenever now and then whenever I I uh, like visit my cousin over to play the game. Uh, and it wasn't just that, it was also Dragon Ball Rage and Blast. Uh, that was a game that my other cousin actually owned for his Xbox 360. And I went over playing it a lot, and I actually really loved that game a lot. And it was around that time where I would also get into Dragon Ball Z Kai, which was started airing on Nicktoons. And it, this was pretty much like the shorter version of Dragon Ball Z, where they just cut out all the filler and instead just focus on the actual story that's what dragon ball z Kai was all about so uh that was pretty much my starting point of my journey as a dragon ball fan i kept as i as i kept watching i started getting more into the dragon ball series and at the time i didn't have a playstation 2 or well, i did have a playstation 2 at the time i but at the time i didn't have any other consoles but um, I think during the fifth grade, I got an Xbox 360 for Christmas, and as time went on, I would get my, uh, but, but I would also get Dragon Ball Z Burst Limit for the 360. That was actually my third video game that I would own, because the first two that I actually owned was during the fourth grade, and that was Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi, along with Dra Super Dragon Ball Z. Those were the two games that I played though, a lot, but it was mostly Budokai Tenkaichi. So, I really enjoyed those two games a lot. And during, I think during my summer break after for, the fourth grade, I think it was around a time where I actually turned 11 years old, uh, I was introduced to two other Dragon Ball Z games. Uh, those were Budokai Tenkaichi 3 along with Budokai 3. And those were two games I also enjoyed a lot. So after that, that's where um, I would also get into Dragon Ball Z. They had episode someone I don't know who uploaded them, but somebody uploaded four episodes of Dragon Ball Z on YouTube, and I would end up watching every single episode all the way up to the uh, Majin Buu saga. And man, I really it, it really starting. I'm really starting to solidify myself as a Dragon Ball fan because I really love every aspect of dragon ball the saiyan saga 
the Freezer saga, all every single saga in Dragon Ball Z, I just really loved. I loved watching every last bit of it. And this was also around the time during, I believe, seventh grade or eighth grade. It was it was probably eighth grade where I would also have started watching the Dragon Ball, the original Dragon Ball show. So I had a lot of I really had starting to get a lot of fond memories from my childhood all the way to my preteen, all the way to my teenage years. And as time went on, I was also I would end up starting getting more Dragon Ball Z games. I got my hands on Raging Blast 1 and 2. I really loved those. Um, I didn't own Ultimate Senkaichi, but my cousin also owned that game for the PlayStation 3. I played it. Uh, at, at, as a kid, I thought it was okay. I thought I enjoyed it a bit. But, you know, when you get older and sometimes when you get older, your taste in like a video game could actually change either slightly or dramatic dramatic ah but it can it can change a lot so um and it was also around the time we'll also get into the movie dragon ball evolution <laughs> i know a lot of people really hate that movie a lot but to me i thought it's a it's a guilty pleasure I thought I thought it was really fun to watch, you know. It, it, yeah, it didn't really feel like Dragon Ball, but it was still entertaining at the end of the day. So, um, around that time, when I started getting older, I would also start getting in some of the new Dragon Ball Z games. Um, I got Dragon Ball Z Battle of Z just by pure chance. Well, not pure chance, but more like pure luck because a friend actually like gave me that game along with the code for Goku wearing Sage Naruto's outfits. That, he gave me a code for that as well. And that was in exchange for two other Dragon Ball games that I had, but I was able to get back. So, uh, and I experienced Dragon Ball Z Battle of Z a lot i really experienced it and i enjoy i really enjoyed the game i know many people don't like it but i thought it was really fun uh the single player aspect was fun the multiplayer aspect was also fun i also also love the fact that you can play co-op the co-op story mode online it was a really fun time to do it was a really fun time to play the game with your friends and just team up together with your favorite Dragon Ball Z characters and just work together to knock out all the bad guys. I, <laughs> I think that was a really fun time to be a Dragon Ball fan. I, I, it wasn't just that, but I would also get the Budokai HD collection. I would also get uh, Dragon Ball Xenoverse and I would also get Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 and then Dragon Ball Fighters. And yeah, I think Dragon Ball Fighters was the, like the last uh, Dragon Ball Z game I would actually get. But it wasn't just that. But I would also get into Dragon Ball GT. Uh, before I think it was like around 2010 when I was still in the fourth grade. Uh, this was before I actually got into Beyblade, and I would actually own the full Dragon Ball GT set. And I remember watching it, watching it a lot. And I think during summer break, uh, I would like visit my sister's house, you know, f to spend the whole summer there. And we did watch some episodes of uh, Dragon Ball GT together. And I think another good memory was me playing Dragon Ball Rage and Blast with my other sister. That was also fun. So, right when I... Uh, why when I did, why when I got into Dragon Ball GT, um, I think uh, 2015 was also, I think 2015 or 2016, it was, it was a, one of those years where it was around a time where I also get into Dragon Ball Super. And I, I couldn't keep up with it much, but in 20, I think it was like 2018 or 2019, uh, I decided to binge watch the whole show just to see, just to get to the, uh, all the way to the end. And it has some of the most iconic moments ever made. And I know, I know Dragon Ball Z also has its iconic moments, like the over 9,000 meme, uh, Goku turning Super Saiyan. 
Gohan defeating Cell with the father son Kamehameha. Uh, as well as Goku using the spirit bomb against Kid Buu and it finally worked for the first time. Those were some really great iconic moments. But Dragon Ball Super, despite my like criticisms about it, it also has its like iconic moments. The most iconic one is especially Goku becoming fully mastered Ultra Instinct. That was the most iconic one. It, it, it was a like if you are a Dragon Ball, if you are a Dragon Ball fan, you should know how iconic and how awesome that scene was. It definitely like it definitely showed that Toriyama to this day still had his touch. He still had his touch. So, yeah, there was a lot of great, there was a lot of great moments I had with the, the, the Dragon Ball series. A lot of great memories. And I really enjoyed playing all, like, all the Dragon Ball games. Not all of them, but the majority of them. I enjoyed, I, like I said, I enjoyed the Budokai series, the Budokai Senkaichi series. I did enjoy playing uh, Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z uh, Shin Budokai 1. Um, I also enjoyed playing Tenkaichi Tag Team along with Raging Blast 1 and 2, and I even enjoyed Battle of Z, even the Xenoverse games and Dragon Ball Fighters. There was a lot of Dragon Ball games I really enjoyed a lot. I also enjoyed Super Dragon Ball Z. I won't forget that game. <laughs> so yeah, there were a lot of Dragon Ball Z games I really enjoyed. I also enjoyed the Dragon Ball movies. I also enjoyed the movies as well. And it's hard to dictate my favorite Dragon Ball Z movie, but I think one of them would be the Broly movie, Broly the Legendary Super Saiyan. I thought that was really, really cool. And it was like the introduction of Broly. Um, and not just that, but like, some of the, like, there was also other good memories that I had. That being seeing the, like, the latest two Dragon Ball films at the cinema. I really love those moments. To being able to watch Dragon Ball Z or Dragon Ball Super Broly on the big screen, as well as Dragon Ball Super Superhero, and uh, Superhero that was around a time where like Dra Fortnite actually collaborated with Dragon Ball, and because of that, we've got so many Dragon Ball cosmetics. To the fact that I just when I got back into Fortnite during last year, twenty twenty three, I had an obligation to get. All the dragon, like almost all the Dragon Ball cosmetics, as I could, because I'm a hardcore Dragon Ball fan. I also won't forget the fact that um, I I'll also never forget the fact that Gypsy gifted me like Dragon, like Goku, Goku Black, and Beerus. Like I'll never, I'll never forget that. It it it, it also made me, also made it a bit easier for me to get the rest of the cosmetics. I remember, like I remember like last year, not last year, but like months ago oh god i got Jan Jan january it was around january of this month i was able to get my hands on boma vegeta uh frieza cell and gohan so as i said piccolo was the only skin that i'm missing and i will I, and when dragon when the dragon ball cosmetics come back you can be sure i'm getting piccolo instantly <laughs> so i have I had a really lot of fond memories with the Dragon Ball series, and I also enjoyed watching, like, I also enjoyed watching Dragon Ball as well. Out of the four that I've seen, which was Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball GT, and Dragon Ball Super, Dragon Ball Z is still my favorite out of, out of the four. <laughs> Dragon Ball Z is still my favorite. It truly shows the marksmanship that Kira Toriyama had. I will never forget the amount of hard work, the amount of blood, sweat, and tears he has put into Dragon Ball. And for him to go out like that, it's really saddening, but at the end of the day, even so, he, he is still not dead. He is still, he is still alive. In our, he is still alive in our hearts. He is still there in our spirits. He is still there looking down at us, smiling at us. Telling us that it'll be okay. Like. <laughs> it, 
it just shows how much of an impact he's made, not just in Japan, but worldwide. And to see a lot of content creators, voice actors and actresses, even those that haven't even like voiced in Dragon Ball, as well as the mangakas is really, really touching. And like, you gotta, like, you gotta, you gotta understand without Akira Toriyama, we wouldn't have these amazing mangakas like Kubo, Oda, and Kishimoto. We wouldn't, like, these three, without a Toriyama, these three would not have, like, the inspiration to create Naruto, One Piece, and Bleach. Tor Toriyama made a huge impact, and without that, th those three mangaka, they would, like, they would not have the inspiration and courage to like to create the big three and you know just seeing like like the messages that oda and kishimoto have wrote about toriyama during his passing like it's really it's really heartwarming to see that they've had a lot of inspiration from toriyama as for, and as for Kubo himself, I know that like if it wasn't for Toriyama, Bleach wouldn't even be a thing. Kubo wouldn't be able to like have his he would not be able to have his manga be accepted in Shonen Jump. And because of because of that, we got it like we have to acknowledge Toriyama for everything that he's done, not just for the mangaka, but for the whole world. Because again, Dragon Ball is worldwide. It is the father of the big three, whether you like it or not. And you got to understand that, like, a lot of the anime have gained some, like, inspiration from Dragon Ball. That also includes Pretty Cure. That, Pretty Cure has also gotten its, like, Pretty Cure has also gotten its inspiration from Dragon Ball. You cannot, you cannot deny that, okay? So... Yeah, <laughs> and even though it, yeah, even though it's like it's, it's really sad. Is even though it's really heartbreaking, it's really heart wrenching to hear the passing of Toriyama. We can all come together and just embask on all the memories that he's given us, all of the material that he has given us, all of and the huge impact that he's made in the whole world. And it's not just Dragon Ball. There's Chrono Trigger. There's Dragon Quest. Um, there's there's Doctor Slum, and there's Sandland. Toriyama has created all of those. Well, not technically not. I wouldn't say like Dragon Quest. Not technically. He has he has worked on the art style of this, but he he did make a huge contribute to to Dragon Quest. So, yeah, although he's gone, he will not be forgotten. I will never forget all the hard work that he's put into Dragon Ball, into all the, all the other projects that he's made. And I, and I am hoping that Dragon Ball Daima actually becomes a really, really great anime. It, 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 like, it felt like it was going to be like a callback to the original Dragon Ball. I felt like that was probably that could have been his visionary. That could have been something that he wanted to, that he's been wanting to make and for it to happen and for it to actually get his anime adaptation. You can build. You can be sure that I'm gonna be watching it. And also, and in terms of the dragon, in terms of like the video game aspects, I'm hoping that Spark and Zero does well. And when I get a PS5, you can be sure that I'm also getting that game. Because I love Dragon Ball. And Spark and Zero being the fourth entry of the Budokan Tenkaichi series. You can be sure that I'm very excited for it. So I'm very excited for all the projects that you know, Toriyama worked on. I'm very excited for all the stuff to come out. And um, I, hope, I hope that they actually carry out his legacy really well. Because he, 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 he is an icon. He is the father of of the anime that is that became our childhood that became our teenage years and to this day 
to this day, Dragon Ball is still my number one favorite anime. Guaranteed. So, all I, can, all I want to say is um, my condolences goes out to the family and friends of Toriyama. And I hope he's, and I hope and hope he's, I hope he's resting really well. And I also won't forget the, um, the quote that he said, move well, study well, play well, eat well, rest well. That is the total master way. So rest in peace to Akira Toriyama. And I look forward to whatever projects he had planned in the future. Um, uh, now there's no outro needed because now is not the time and, um, I'll see you all. I'll, I'll see you all in a few days. Um, I need, I, I need to take some time off from this because, it, it, uh, th th this is, this is very impactful and I, I don't, I don't have the mindset to, uh, make any videos for the time being, but I just want to get this video out. I just want to share my memories and everything that i've uh my full experience with the dragon ball franchise so um yeah that's about it uh yeah I i'll see you guys i'll see you guys later